Switzerland, Ukraine, Great Britain, People's Republic of China, Australia, Netherlands. The excellent Swiss squad in lane one, coached by Nick Lloyd, Celia Dupre closest to us, Pascal Walker, Lisa Lutcher, Salome Ulrich. In lane two, beautiful technique from these Ukrainians. Yevhina Dovgodko, Katerina Duchenko, Natalia Dovgodko, and Dariana Verkoliad. Dovgodko, Olympic champion in 2012. The British, can they challenge the Chinese? Lucy Glover on the left of your picture. Georgina Brayshaw, Lola Anderson in two. And Jess Layden with a cap on in the bows. I'm sure her mum's here watching her. The Olympic champions, Chui Tong on the left of your picture. Liu Xiang, Zhong Liang and Chen Huichua up in the bows. Chinese in the grandstands. Catherine Amanda Rowan, Bateman, Amanda Catherine Bateman, Rowan. Rowena Meredith in two. And on the left of your picture, Harriet Hudson from the Australian team. And in lane six for the Netherlands, Nicola so the Boss, Netherlands, Benta Paulis, little, Benta little sister of Ilsa, the Olympic champion, Ilsa Kolkman, Tessa Dulmans, and Nika Voss up in the bows. And we're away in the women's quadruple skull. China just popping their bow out to a very early lead these are the women to watch the olympic champions have been so dominant in this boat for several years now yeah it'd be interesting to see really got the british alongside them whether great britain can go with the chinese we take a look i mean so well synced up they kind of move as a unit this ukrainian quad sort of on the water and off the water they're always together and uh, yeah been pretty impressive so far getting onto that lane number two Swiss really brave out front at the moment. We are riding with the Chinese. Trisha Tong, of course, stroked that quadruple to gold. The last World Championships back in 2019 in Linz and to the Tokyo Olympic gold 2021 last year. Just moving through to vie with the Swiss for the lead. It's only the crew from Australia yet to make a showing in lane five. Yeah, the Australians just getting dropped there in the very early stages as we see there the Swiss moving nicely. Maybe the bow up in third place. At this stage, strong start for the British in lane three. Just one seat down on the Chinese and now moving into their rhythm quite nicely. Yeah, well, this is the camera on the 500 metre mark gone. You can see it on that, those first four crews in the first four lanes pretty tightly packed. Um, looking at the stroke rates, most people have come down 37 or 38. It's just Switzerland who kept it a bit higher all through that first 500. Um, can't help thinking that might be something they pay for later. This is what we wanted to see. China versus Great Britain. Lucy Glover there in the stroke seat from Warrington Rowing Club. They'll all be watching her in the northwest. And of course, Edinburgh University too. Georgie Brayshaw behind her really shoving it down in the three C, isn't she? Lola Anson, the fastest sculler in the British team at the trials. And the British moving back a little bit on the Chinese in this second quarter. Jess Layden making the calls up in the bows. Well, those two quads at the front, the British and the Chinese, definitely have moved on on the rest of the field. But I think they're holding the same positions against each other. Looking now at the Ukrainian crew, 37 strokes a minute, straight down the middle of the lane, looking pretty good. Yeah, great start here for Ukraine. Currently sitting in the bronze medal position, the Australians have disappeared out of screen. I'm really shocked with that. They've had a good season. Bronze medalists in Tokyo and had a great heat against the Chinese. I think there was only a length or so in it, maybe less than. So surprising to see them out of the mix. But the British here holding their nerve. Ukraine sitting on their hip. It's British quad coach by Andrew Randell. The Aussie who's done so much to shake up British wounds rowing. Produce a fantastic atmosphere in the group. They're loving what they do and uh, believing that they can challenge the Olympic champions. But China moving out to a half length lead. That's maybe a decisive move from the Chinese, unless Britain have got something special they can add in this third quarter. Well, here we go. The third quarter is always so important as we look here at this crew from Netherlands looking fantastic. 
moving really smoothly. Just look how great that water is, how synced up they are. We tend to think about them looking relaxed, and they do look relaxed at the finish of the stroke, never overworking it in the second half. And they're well on it, and they're right in there. In, I'm sure they'll be in the shake-up for the medals. But what colour medals will they be? Coached by Frick Robbers, again, another crew coached by the young Dutchman. There's the half-length lead by the Chinese. I think that will be significant as we come down towards the finish. Chen Zhang Liu, a tree, crafted an excellent race move in the middle of the course, just to take their boat away from the British. So we see the Australians on screen there, Kate Rowan, Amanda Bateman, Rowena Meredith and Harriet Hudson. They're in sixth. We see Harriet yell to the crew to try and get themselves back into this race, but the Dutch perhaps just getting their bow in front of Ukraine into that third position. Yeah, I can't help thinking the Netherlands are looking pretty good there and looking very good here is this Chinese crew. In this third quarter, they've opened that gap. Almost every stroke is just an inch a stroke that they've moved away, a few centimetres a stroke, getting away from the British, and they've opened this gap up. I think it's going to be more than half a length through the 1,500-metre uh, mark, probably three-quarters of a length. The Dutch just half a length ahead of the Ukrainian team for the bronze medal position. Ukraine ahead of the Swiss and the Australians. There she is, Bentopoulos, 25 years of age, from the Nierhaus Club and then in Amsterdam on the Amstel. China continue to lead. Great Britain just dropping a little further back. Well, Great Britain have taken their rate up now. They've been sitting on about 37. They've just come up to 38. China, just a very steady 36. And for me, it's now looking at the Netherlands and the way they are already starting to sprint it in. They look relaxed earlier on. Now will they be able to use that in this final shake-up coming into the last 250? Watch the Dutch, 39, 40 strokes per minute now. They're the fastest moving boat on the course. 5.4 metres per second. They're starting to walk through the Chinese. This will be sensational. Are the Dutch going to turn this around and beat China? What an upset it will be. They're taking them one stroke at a time. Are they going to run out of course here? China out in front. Uh, Tri Tong under pressure like she's never seen before. The Dutch are putting them under pressure. I think China will hold on. There's still quite a few strokes to go to the finish. I look out of our country booth, can't see them yet. Well, still 100 metres to go, and the Netherlands are putting a fantastic move. China appear to be responding to it. Here we go, coming down to the line. It's the Chinese out in front. They will win another gold medal. Fantastic effort from the Netherlands to take the silver medal in this. China win gold, Netherlands take the silver. Great Britain, a well-deserved bronze for them. Ukraine in fourth place. Disappointment for the Ukrainians. Came here for perhaps a medal or podium finish. Switzerland and Australia. Well, the, the field's getting closer to the Chinese. I thought it might be the British, but uh, that quad from the Netherlands. The Netherlands have really moved on since they took the silver in the Europeans behind the British and uh, credit to them, the coach Freak Robbers, Ilko Mierhuls, the performance director, said in the training program with all those long miles, low intensity work. Yeah, no, the Netherlands will be really pleased with that. Over on the side lane, they saved their best till last, delivered it when it mattered. And um, yeah, there was a moment when they looked like they were coming all the way through. There was, wasn't there? I thought they were gonna just keep trucking on through there, but a little response from the Chinese popping their rate up just to hold on to that gold medal. Yeah, I guess it was that sort of confidence, wasn't it, that the Chinese had that they knew their way of doing it. They stuck just a little bit lower in the rate than everyone else. Everyone else went for their sprint earlier. The Dutch, fantastic, they just went straight through the British to get the silver. Um, but uh, China knew what they had to do and just squeezed at home to make their golds safe. They knew they were under pressure, the Chinese, didn't they? Yeah, I think they did. They won't have known, will, will they, what was going to come out then? No. So, confirmation there. 6.17 for the Chinese ahead of the Netherlands and Great Britain. And Ukraine just missing out. The People's Republic of China!